If you've heard anything about the Beretta 9000S, you've probably heard that it's a raging piece of shit, and uh, that's certainly what I've heard about it. And being the contrarian gun hipster that I am, I really wanted to get one in my hands and shoot it and get to know it, and tell the internet that the poor Beretta 9000S is simply misunderstood. Or it just might be a piece of shit. So if you've watched my other videos, you're familiar with my channel, you know I'm a big Beretta fan. I've got a 92F from the 80s, I've got a Cougar from the 90s, I've got a PX4 Compact, the Langdon Tactical Edition, I've got a Cheetah, I've owned um, a couple 92 Compacts. There's always this kind of paradox in the Beretta lineup with the 9000S. It was the gun that everybody hated. It was just strange that you know, they, they're producing all these these really excellent pistols, and then, you know, why is the 9000S just the, you know, red-headed stepchild, and why does everybody hate it? So, I was really curious about that, and I saw this one for dirt cheap at my local gun shop, and I decided to pick it up. Just a little bit of background on the gun. This was Beretta's first polymer frame pistol, and it was released in 2000. I think it was made until about 2006. It didn't do that well, I guess, and it's known for just its it's like Y2K styling, and it's uh, it, it appeared as Tom Cruise's sidearm in the movie Minority Report. It's pretty well known for that, if, if anybody knows about it. It's a very compact gun, and clearly Beretta was trying to get a piece of the concealed carry market, which was, you know, rapidly expanding um, through the late 90s. And it's size-wise, it's quite a bit smaller than a Glock 19. It's a bit bigger than a Glock 26. The guns that I feel it is closest to in terms of its overall footprint um, are the HKP 2000 SK and the CZ Rami. It really kind of fits that footprint. And while it, you know, it filled the right niche in terms of size, it, the gun is just super chunky and super fat and people really give it a lot of heat for that. And I'll say it looks freaking cool. I mean, I, I really do like the looks of it and, um, you know, it's nice and streamlined and as, as fat as the gun is, it has this very rounded profile and, you know, the slide is kind of rounded and it, it kind of bleeds into the frame in, which is also rounded and it has almost this cylindrical character to the barrel and, you know, I threw it in like a soft holster and carried it around a little bit and it's, it's honestly, given its width and everything and how heavy it is and it, it is very heavy, it's a, it's a dense, chunky feeling gun, um, which I kind of like, but it's, it's not terrible to carry. It's certainly no, no worse than carrying, um, like I said, a double stack subcompact double action single action gun like a Rami or a CZ, or I'm sorry, a HK P2000 SK, both of which I've owned. So Beretta did some, had some interesting innovations with this gun and you see that it has the open top slide, which is, you know, very common with most Berettas, especially the 92. Um, and a lot of the earlier models had had the same kind of design. And as as you know, as you probably know, the 92 uses the Walther P38's locking block system, so it doesn't need to like lock up on the top of the barrel like a Browning system would do. You know, with the concentric lugs that you'd find on uh, like a 1911 or a Browning High Power or the Sig Sauer style like squared off breech section which locks into the ejection port. With the open top slide, this thing can't do any of that, but it is a Browning tilt barrel action, which I think is pretty pretty fascinating. And Beretta engineered um, a really unique way to do that. And uh, I'll do that here. You, you push this button on the side, it's kind of stiff, and you rotate this lever down like, like so. There, and you can see that the slide popped off and you just kind of bring it off the rails. But, um, you can see here inside the gun, it's got this like typical Browning high power style camming lug here, and that's what cams the barrel down. But the gun actually locks up 
instead of on the top, like, you know, virtually every other browning style action, it locks up here on the bottom of the slide, which is pretty cool. And it does that via these, these side lugs here. So that's pretty cool. And um, you can see how it just kind of fits in there. And um, I think that's pretty ingenious. And it has this really, really big, beefy, like, locking insert inside the frame here. And, and a lot of guns, like, polymer frame guns have some sort of locking insert that, like, cams the barrel down. And this is no exception. Sig Sauer, even their alloy frame guns have, have that kind of thing in the frame. A solid steel thing that cams the barrel down. So that's um, fairly standard for, you know, for a lock breech gun. And I will... Put this back. You just put the. It's got a dual recoil spring captured, which is which is kind of nice. So, the design is 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 pretty interesting and pretty cool. And um, it's like I said, it seems it seems very well made. It's very solid, and um, like all Beretta products, it, it has a really good solid quality feel to it. Also interesting, it has uh, slide rails like a CZ where the slide actually rides inside the frame rail. So you've got these kind of deep rails on the side of, of the frame and the slide sits down in that. And then of course everyone naturally complains that you can't grab the top of the slide because apparently it's too hard for people to do that. Anyway, I think with the interesting design and interesting geometry, I think it, it kind of fucked up the placement of the trigger relative to the grip. And you'll notice, I decocked it there, you push up on this safety to decock, um, kind of like a Beretta Cheetah, but if you look how far forward that trigger shoe is relative to the grip, it has an extremely long trigger reach. It feels like a 45, and you can see I'm, I've got really small hands, short fingers, and for me, the, the double action trigger reach is, is really a stretch. It, my hand's very stretched out, and it's, it's hard to get a good grip on the gun as I'm pulling the trigger. Even in single action, like, you know, I can get, you know, my fingertip on it with no problem, but the trigger is reaching back from its pivot point to kind of allow you to get your finger on it. And um, even in single action, it, you, your hands just feel kind of stretched out. You don't feel like you have really good control over the pistol. And um, that, that was my experience at the range. I was able to get some some halfway decent groups from it, but it it really took a lot of focus to um, you know get the trigger technique down, and it, it's very much a um, a fingertip kind of affair when you're pulling this trigger and it's very sensitive to inputs and it's not forgiving and uh, if, if I didn't just do it just right the thing would go right it would go a couple inches right and um, it was not an easy gun to shoot well and I shot it okay I think the trigger in single action isn't isn't terrible it's um, got a little creep but it's got a nice crisp break the double action is insanely long like you know it starts far forward like I said but it feels like it's never going to break, and it, it's not horribly heavy, and it doesn't stack horribly, but it's not an easy double action to shoot, uh, that, that's for sure. And the recoil on it actually isn't too bad, and it's, like I said, it's dense and it's heavy, and it handles the recoil pretty well. There's not a lot of muzzle rise, and... Um, it, it really stays planted. So from that standpoint, it's it's not too bad. If it does fit your hands, if you have real big hands, you can get your hands around this grip and reach the trigger, you might shoot it well. With respect to the grip, one other thing that these guns are kind of infamous for is 
They originally shipped with like a rubber sleeve from the factory that are, are you know, was around the grip frame and um, it was not removable, it was just kind of a permanently attached rubber grip sleeve. It was kind of a pioneering idea for the time, but the thing is, over time, that rubber grip, grip sleeve would deteriorate and crumble and fall off, and this one has done that. And the kind of best practice as far as dealing with that issue with these guns is to put a Hogue rubber grip, grip sleeve on these things. That's what I've done. Um, actually, if you look on the internet to reviews and stuff, they say that the one that goes to the Springfield XDE fits the best, and you get almost like a you know 95% fit and it covers it covers this part a little better and everything like that uh, this is I don't even remember which one of these is you know what gun this grip sleeve is actually supposed to be for I just had it and it it fit on there okay and it it does make it feel quite a bit better but it's still a girthy grip and for a gun that already has a crazy long trigger reach it's it's not ideal as far as reliability it uh, with all I put over 200 rounds through it um, I don't know, probably close to 250 rounds through it, and all the factory ammo I gave it, it ran just fine. It did not like remanufactured ammo. I had uh, some failures to extract, and um, you know, I you can't, I guess, blame a gun for not running really shitty ammo, and um, I tend to think this ammo, the, the casings, there were some, like, you could see like a little bit of bulge on the casing so I think it was probably like sticking in the chamber and um, it just the extractor wasn't able to pull it out so you know do, do you fault a gun for that I will say like some of my other guns have, have cycled that ammo this one didn't I have had you know respectable guns that didn't run remanufactured ammo both CZ's I've owned um, I've owned a CZ Rami and a PCR Neither of them were too crazy about remanufactured ammo, and I've heard CZs kind of have like tighter chambers, so maybe they're a little less tolerant of, um, you know, shitty ammunition. So, you know, I, it's not that I would ever carry remanufactured ammo or use it for self-defense or anything like that, but I think, you know, you get a gun that can run crummy ammo, you know it's going to run decent ammo, and it's just kind of, I guess... A little extra reassurance, a little extra insurance that there's some margin of error there for, for the gun's going to cycle. So, you know, that's, um, that's a personal choice. So, some of the other criticisms you'll encounter on the internet about this gun. The safety decocking levers are super stiff and hard to actuate. Somewhat true. It, it, it's stiff putting on the safety for sure, and it has loosened up. I, I don't think this gun had been shot much when I got it. Um, it has loosened up since I've messed with it a little bit, and you can carry this gun cocked and locked too. It's got it's got a safety decocking system, kind of like a USP, where um, it's actually the opposite of a USP. But you push up and it decocks, and it, then it's in safe, and you put it down one notch, and uh, then it's off safe. So um, you know if you're on, you know, with a hammer cocked in single action, you push it up one notch, and then you can carry it cocked and locked. It's a little it's a little slippery that the top of the lever is a little slippery so i think you'd have to really practice that if you're going to carry this thing cocked and locked it, uh, drawing it and flicking this thing off and it is a little stiff but to me that's not a deal breaker I, it's it's not too bad um, i've had other stiff safeties and other guns this one isn't any worse another thing you hear is that when you decock these things sometimes the decocker will fail and it can just discharge the gun um, and I've also read that that was a problem on the 40 cal ones and not the 9 millimeters. I decocked this gun lots of times at the range with a round in the chamber, no issues. So, uh, for in my experience with a 9 millimeter, it was a non-issue, and I would have no problem decocking this, you know, for a carry situation at home or, or whatever. I shit you not the safety literally just broke <laughs> as i was as i was filming this review so the it used to be you could you could push it up into this notch and it would be on safe but whatever you know notch holds it in the safe position has broken and it just decocks so now it's a g model like on accident <laughs> So I guess, I mean, I mean, a lot of people prefer the G model anyway, but uh, you know, that's not great. 
and it doesn't speak, I guess, highly of, of the integrity of, of this gun's uh, safety system. So in fairness, I took, after the safety had broken, I took this gun to the range and chambered around and detoxed it a bunch of times and it still did not go off. So I don't think the fact that the safety notch broke had any impact on its ability to decock safely. So is the 9000S as horrible as the internet has made it out to be? Well, I think that's that's a personal question. And for me, personally, I really can't think of a reason that I want to keep this gun around. It's difficult for me to shoot well. It's, uh, you know, and the ergonomics aren't great. It's not horrible to carry, you know, like I said, it's got that nice rounded profile and it's a good size overall but there are easier guns to carry. In terms of reliability, it's it's not, I'm not gonna give it an F, but I'm not gonna give it an A either. It seemed like it had been fired very little. It was almost like a brand new gun when I got it, so maybe there's a little bit of a break-in period, but I think overall, it's just, in terms, when you compare the rest of Beretta's product line, it just isn't as well thought out. I think maybe they were scrambling to meet meet the demands of a concealed of the concealed carry market in a unique way and they cut some corners made some compromises and did some things that just kind of undermine the potential of the gun i'll say it, it is well made it does seem well made but i don't think it's i wouldn't say it's well executed i guess that's my my take on it these are dirt cheap and if you're a beretta fan if you're just a fan of of history you know, I found this for less than 300 bucks at, at my local gun shop, and, you know, why not? It was cool to get to experience it and just, you know, see if all the rumors are true. You may love this gun, and for the right hands, the right shooter, the right person, it may, um, it may work great. But it's a cool piece of history, and glad to have had the chance to shoot it and get to know it and tell you guys about it. So... Um, that's really all I've got to say about the Beretta 9000S, and um, I'll probably be selling it here before too long, but um, just figured I'd make a quick video on it. So thank you so much for watching. This is Hipster Tactical, and I am Matt.